How many of you people have been on this country for more than one day? Yeah? <laughs> We're about, about 10 years. Who have been here more than 10 years? We're about 50 years, your family and you. 100 years. Yeah? yeah. Your family's around that long? Yeah. How does it make you feel? Do you feel like you've got some responsibility to talk for this country and this water? I think it does. That's why you're all, all, while you're all here. It feels pretty good, I think, to have a responsibility for something that's bigger than you. And we kind of feel that way. We've been around for, you know, our mob been around for God knows how long. You know, some say 40,000 years. But let's just cut that in half and say 20,000 years. It's a fairly long time. So I hope I have your approval to speak on behalf of these waters in this country. Because I feel like I have a responsibility, I have a right and an obligation to do this. I'd like to thank Jerry for his, for his welcome. I'd like to acknowledge this local mob here and these people in this country. I belong to Mythica, which um, Chimpa Black Hawk, which is me. Um, and the lands that we kind of belong to around uh, the eastern, we're, we're bordered on the east with the Cooper, and we're bordered on the west with the Diamond Tin, which not a real lot of people are talking about, and we like to keep it like that. Yeah. You know, this country, the channel country, is commonly called channel country now. It used to be called Kirundiri in the old days, before, before contact. And it, it kind of meant all this country around here where all these three big rivers run. So I'd like to, before I get into this thing, I'd like to thank Honourable honor Member for Gregory Vaughan, he's gone now. Um, but Vaughan, as he said, grew up in Quilpie, and when I was a kid, that's where I grew up. So he's been a, a friend of the family and a friend of this country for a long time. So just in my little yarn, I just want to share with you my thoughts around these waters, around this country, about this forum and the pending decision of the Newman government is going to make around this. I want to be clear here that I'm speaking for the rivers. Waldoo, we call the three rivers. I'm not speaking for other Aboriginal people on this country. They can speak for themselves. I've had the opportunity to do that with the previous government where I spent something like two years negotiating an agreement with some pretty classy and pretty passionate people. And they're all here today, most of you here today. It was a privilege to do that. We come up with what we thought was a long-term, sustainable, equitable protection for this country and these rivers. This agreement supported and was signed off by all parties and it met the needs of these rivers. And I believe it met the needs of the community, economically, culturally, and environmentally. But now it's up to the two new Aboriginal representatives, Judith Harris, Harrison and, and Jerry, who's here today, to speak for Aboriginal people. So I hope that they're out there talking to them and listening to them. And I'm here to tell you that it's been pretty quiet my way. Nobody's come and talked to me about what I think about it. So I'm glad I'm here to tell you fellas. They don't have to look too far if they want to know what we think because in, I think it was about 18 months ago, we had an Aboriginal forum down at Tibborough. And we had something like 70 Aboriginal people from across the Lake Air Basin come and meet for a couple of days. I forget how long it was. Well, how long was that? Yeah, about three days we sat down there and yarned and come up with some pretty powerful stuff. 
there was, and out of that, there was a resolution, a Tibborough resolution around what we believe was going to be strong for the Lake Air Basin. And we sent that to all government parties in Queensland. And one of them was to declare the Cooper Creek, the Georgian and the Diamantina as wild rivers. And we know that this government's not going to go, go that line. But I think it's pretty important that we continue the fight around supporting these three rivers out here. There was another one in there that I think Angus was talking about these high preservation areas around really protecting those areas as well because of the flood water going out. So to me it's very questionable as to the purpose of forming another committee with almost the same people to do the same kind of thing that we've already done. To me it's a complete waste of time, waste of my time, waste of money, and it also devalues something that a lot of really deadly people spend a lot of time trying to sort through. These discussions have been had, the consultations have been done, the people have been engaged. The relationships have been maintained, importantly, and the bloody decisions have been made. The Newman government, I feel, have ignored due process, ignored community, and ignored expert advice. For what? Sure, we can draw the long bow and say that it was an election promise. Now, the LNP had three election promises made in public. First one was that we'll keep the declarations. The next one was we'll review them. And now they want a new, new one. We'll get rid of this, this one that we got. So kind of keep shifting the goalposts for me. So what's the purpose of this panel? And why has the previous process been dishonoured? So yeah, I'm a little bit cynical. I might sound a little bit angry and frustrated. Yes, I am. Does the Newman government want a different outcome? Bloody oath, they do. Will this new committee give it to them? I bloody well hope not. Um, you know, they, they want to open this up to large-scale irrigation. They call it small-scale irrigation, but you know, I, I totally agree with Angus. Irrigation is irrigation. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. I think they want to open it up for more mining opportunities. Now, I'm not against, against mining. I'm not against any progression. But I am against it at the expense of country and at the expense of water. I think it's really dangerous, and even the graziers that I've yarned with before, and the processes they've been through, the mining representatives that I've yarned with, they think it's dangerous as well and not sustainable. Minister Cribb said this morning on AM, ABC, that they were looking at small-scale irrigations, but, you know, what's this mean? What's it really mean? If you can have small-scale irrigation, it means that you've got license. You've got license for water that you own. If you own it, you can sell it. So then we get into trading water. Where does it, where does it stop? So there is no such thing as small-scale irrigation. I would, I would certainly look at water for stock, yet water for irrigation? No way. I'm not going to back that at all. <coughs> so let's please learn from the past. Look around the world. Look at the Murray-Darling. We talked about that for God's sake, you know. 
they're still spending millions of dollars trying to sort that through. So I'm angry, yeah, that I'm here again, still having to fight for this. And I think you fellas are getting a little bit frustrated, the same as me. These waters are most significant to all the mobs across the region and below, down past, down past Windora. I had a conversation with Paul Kemp this morning, who's the CEO of the Dury mob. Uh, Dury, they're the mob that got that uh, their country was all around Lake Eyre. And they got about 800 members, and they're sweating on this for them to see what happens and what this Queensland government's going to do, because. They're ready to march. They're ready to come up here and stand with us. You know, our mob, we, we call Lake Air Moana. And Moana is a budgerigar in our language. And you would have seen thousands of budgerigars out here late. And what, what, they, what they tell us is that the water's got to Lake Air. And there's eggs all the way through that country and down Lake Eyre, there's bird life everywhere. As well as all that, I'm sure there's a Wonkamara mob, which is just down the bottom. There's a Waiwai mob, Wonkanguru mob, Buntamara mob. All these fellas are ready to stand as well. Moana is one of our peoples as well as the Multhuri, which is the, the pelicans, the Magwari, which is the storks, the Muljuri, which is the spoonbill, and many more. They represent our families, which made up our clans and our language groups. These rivers in this country sustain thousands of people for thousands of years. They provided food and water for us, as well as food and water for our food. They're also the sites of our birthing, our graves. They're all close by in the soft country, on the side of the sand hill, not far away from water. Along with these waterways, you'll find the foundations of our stories there as well. They either start or end at the significant water rolls all along these iconic rivers. The wood duck story, the pelican story, the famous two boys story and plenty more. These stories inform a society of people for thousands of years. They were and still are our governing laws. These stories connect country, water, to the laws and maintaining them to the people that enable strong relationships between all to be maintained all over those years and they still exist now. And fellas out of Burrsville, they like family to us. Fellas back in the Kuopi, family. And fellas down the river, family. They connect us all the time. And we're connected through all these stories. It's kind of sad that I have to be up here talking about them all, but there you go. They've been our trading routes where we've met neighbours and people from country right across here. They've been our fishing holes, our swimming holes, our camping places, the places that we reflect back and connect to. It's been our obligation for years to look after these waters and to not arm them. Governments may have taken away our rights and responsibilities for other things, but I think I'm here to tell you now with the backing of all them fellas, that they're not going to take this responsibility away from us. You see, I grew up on the Cooper. The swimming, my swimming pool was the bridge down there at Windora, and that was my beach. Most of our Christmases, all our, all our school breakups were held there. This is where we celebrated every year. And just down from there, that pump, where they pumped the water for Windora, I think it's still there. And the same stories for most towns out there today. All these properties along the rivers. And someone wants to potentially destroy it. These rivers are more than just a resource for making money, ladies and gentlemen. 
and you know it. They are significant to this region, its birds, its animals, its plants, its people, and the stories and dreams. And it doesn't matter what bloody colour you are. So just the thought of someone wanting to do something to threaten this unique and iconic river system, and these, which is really significant to this region, to this state, this country and the world, is just crazy. I can't, I can't understand it. And prior to all this, we did have strong protection across the river. And now we've got to go through this again. So I'm glad you're back, Vaughan. Could you please take a message back to Minister Cribbs and, and Premier Newman to honour the LNP's commitment to listen to Aboriginal people in this region and back off this country in the waters. Back to bloody well off. Not having irrigation, coal seam gas, those sort of things in this country is certainly not holding us back as Aboriginal people. As long as these rivers are okay, we're okay. And besides, let's get a little bit more sophisticated about it. Because we can create jobs through the protection of these rivers, not through the destruction of them. So thank you for the opportunity to talk.